Alright guys, what's up? It is Chi. In today's video, I'm going to be going over some of the things I've been doing in the gym for the past few months, as well as why I've been doing them. Let's go. Got your head nod, cause your neck already know. The first thing I'm going to do is warm up. It's going to last about 15 minutes, but I see it as an essential part of my workout. So coming from a background in track and field, there were several times when my lack of a good warm up impacted my performance negatively or even led to injuries. And more than anything right now, I just want to stay healthy. And you should too. So here, I split my warm-up time between the elliptical and the stair-stepper machine. Some other things I might do are jog outside, use a stationary bike, or jog on a treadmill. So the idea is to warm up your muscles and get your heart rate up. So getting off the stepper, my heart rate was about 150 beats per minute, and I also had a light sweat going. So next up are knee extension isometrics. These are a good additional warm up and in the long term can affect changes in the elasticity of tendon structures, which is helpful in dealing with jumper's knee. I'm not gonna pretend to know the science behind it, but if you want more information, you should check out John Evans on Instagram, who specializes in this kind of stuff. So here, I'm doing three sets on each leg for 30 to 45 seconds. This is a total of about two minutes each leg. The weight I set for myself on the machine is 40 pounds. So Romanian deadlifts or hip hinges have been super helpful with my hamstring flexibility and overall health. I found out about these and their benefits from Dan Bach of Jump Science. And again, I've put a link to the article in the description. For years, I focused mainly on quad dominant exercises, except for hamstring curls and some deadlifts, but my volume in those were never as high as they were in things like squats and lunges. Long term, that caused some imbalances and definitely impacted my flexibility. A few months ago, I actually wasn't able to sprint full speed because of my hamstring injuries, but since adding the hip hinges to my routine, I've been largely pain free. The idea of the hip hinges I'm doing here are to achieve eccentric overload. I do this here with lighter weight by dropping the weight quickly, so there's more momentum to stop at the bottom of the movement. The same can be achieved with heavier weight at relatively slower speeds. And we're squatting. So when squatting, I will always have at least one warm-up set and make sure that my knees are pain-free and that I can get through the range of motion that I want to. In this case, that's just below parallel. So when I first started squatting six years ago, my working sets were mainly three sets of 10 at closer to 40 to 50% of my max, which helped me build my foundation of strength. And I'll still squat like that on some days. I love squatting and highly recommend most people learn how to do the movement well. Some other exercises I might do in addition to squats or if there's no rack available are Bulgarian split squats, reverse lunges, leg extension, and leg press. So here I'm using the leg press not so much as a quad exercise but as a calf burner at the end of my workout. I have half of my foot on the platform, I let my heels drop under the platform, then I bend my knees and extend up my knees and my ankles hard pushing through to my big toe. It's similar to the feeling and sequence I want to achieve when going for my maximum standing vertical jumps. So I put on a total of 140 pounds on the machine but at 15 reps for 3 sets I definitely get a good burn.
I feel like stretching is pretty self-explanatory, but I try and do it for at least five minutes after my workout. Here I stretch my hamstrings and do the butterfly stretch for my groin. As I still hope to compete in some open track and field meets, health and flexibility are one of my top priorities. My hamstrings feel healthier than they felt in the last six months, maybe even ever, so I'm expecting athletic improvements across the board. My groin isn't 100% healthy, but it's well on the way. As an athlete, it's super important to be able to identify your own deficiencies and figure out the most efficient way to work on them. So these have been the staples of my current workout routine. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you found some things you can relate to and find useful to put into your routine. Peace. Thank you.